Yes, I don't see it. Yeah, there we are. There we are. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Huddlers, good morning. Left coast, good morning. Right coast, good morning. North, south. Good morning, Atlanta, Georgia, where it's a beautiful 55 degrees and sunny. Finally, we've been dealing with the rain for like two weeks. So we're so grateful to have some beautiful sun this morning. My name is Robin Stern. I am the host of The Daily Huddle, and I am here today to have a great talk with a friend of mine, Eric Hansen. Eric, you, you had something funny for us this morning. You were telling us this morning. You want to go ahead and share that with us? Sure. Uh, me and a couple of my buddies, um, we flew to Vegas. We got off the plane. We went down the tarmac, and we get into the, into the, uh, the gate, and he runs over to the soda machine, puts 50 cents in, pushes the button, the soda falls out. He puts it up on the table, does it again, 50 cents, pushes the button, soda falls out, puts it up on the table. One more time, he does the same thing. And we were like, dude, come on, let's go. And he goes, hold on, I'm winning. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> Wrong screen. <laughs> oh, hey, that's right. <laughs> How's that? All right, all right, all right. Good morning, huddlers. How y'all doing this morning? Good to see everybody. You're smiling, beautiful faces. Sorel and I got our swamp juice going this morning, so we're fired up and ready to go. And yeah, I just have a couple quick questions before we get started with my, my friend Eric here. Andrea, I'm going to start with you and pick on you this morning. You have your workout outfit like me this morning, so we're, we're on the same page. Got the little hoodie thing going on, right? So, uh, Andrea, what time is it? Uh, Robin, the time is right now is right now and let me check yep it says right here right now <laughs> exactly what time it is yep. thank you so much andrea and uh stan anderson my man stan anderson where are you and what are you grateful for today stan yeah i am right here where i'm supposed to be and i'm grateful for the daily huddle that's awesome. That's awesome. See, that's what I'm talking about. And you know, Lee, you're the next one that's getting picked on, right? So rub the sleep out of your eyes, get your green tea ready. Here we go, Lee. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I just need to know. Wait a minute. Let me make sure I get the right question because I always have to ask Gio when I get to the third one. Um, Not as no, smart as you guys, so ask me an easy question. That's what I always ask. <laughs> I'm hoping the teacher would ask me the easy question. Okay, so Lee, the easy one. How are you and who are you going to hug today, sir? You know, great question. Uh, I am as awesome as I can be. And if I get a, I mean, I'm not sure I'm going to see anybody today. <laughs> all right. We well, you hug your dad then. All right. So, uh, I got to go find him today. <laughs> all right. Great. Great. Well, you are as you say you are, and you get to say how you are and how you say you are today is how your day goes and how your day goes could mean how the rest of your life goes. Thank so you. I appreciate you, sir. And I appreciate you being here with us this morning. My guest today is Mr. Eric Hansen. And Mr. Eric Hansen has a story to tell. Let me tell you, it's, it's pretty incredible. He's turned a life of drug addiction, 10 times in prison, homelessness, and very, very great hardship that he's been through into an inspirational lesson. And that's just the beginning. His goal is to help others find their direction through a change in mindset. Uh, we have all his information to connect with him, but I'm going to pretty much just jump in and let Eric fill us in on what's going on because he's got a story he wouldn't even let us get to the beginning of the show and as you can see it's only four minutes after because he was ready so we just jumped right in and um, I will turn over the question to you Eric can your mess really become your message let's go and talk unpack that a little bit sir um well I'm living proof that it can um I'm already beginning that message and um you know it was it was a pretty big mess um I grew up in a small town, Streamwood, Illinois. My childhood was rough uh, at home, um, but I loved the neighborhood I grew up in. I was I was happy in a lot of areas of my life, but um, you know, home was pretty dark. My dad was pretty rough on us, and um, you know, I was told day in and day out um, that I was no good. I'll never amount to anything. You're an idiot. You know. Um, just snapped at constantly. Um, if I wasn't being beat up, 
watching my dad beat up my mom. That's kind of the childhood I grew up in. Um, when my grandfather or my grandmother died, we moved in with my grandfather and we, we moved about 20 miles away into a whole different area where I knew nobody. And I was looking for the wrong kind of attention. I got in with what I called the tough crowd and started doing drugs at 12 years old. Uh, we were smoking pot, doing acid, um, drinking beer on a regular basis. Um, and, um, you know, it, it didn't really lead me to a lot of trouble at that point, other than maybe at home. Um, you know, I started ditching school. Um, and then my grandfather died and we moved back to Streamwood, Illinois, where I was at um, uh, before we moved. And now I'm in a whole different crowd. All my old friends who are now athletes, because I was an athlete, I played baseball all the way up into my adulthood. I played four years semi-pro baseball. I was a pretty good ball player. Um, I used to re have regrets about that because I, I, I maybe could have went somewhere. I was pretty good. Shoulda, coulda, woulda, right? Shoulda, coulda, woulda. I don't, I, don't, I don't look at life like that anymore, though. But um, so it led up into my adulthood. Same thing, you know, over and over, getting in trouble here and there, little mischief stuff. And um, I ended up getting married. I had two beautiful girls. I love them to death. And, um, you know, a, a part of me used to feel like I let them down. But, I mean, the journey that I've taken to get where I am now, um, although it was a rough one, it got me to where I am now and I'm in a pretty good place. So um, um, then I started breaking the law to get drug money. All right. I started on, started with cocaine and um, I got into sales. Sales is a real up and down type of career. As far as emotionally, you'll be at, you'll be high, um, you know, high as the sky one day. And then, you know, a week later, you haven't sold anything. You're as low as you can get. And I used to mask all those feelings, including, the problems I had at home because of this um, with more drugs. It just didn't make any sense, but I, I, I knew it didn't make sense, but that's what I did. It was just a, a, um, a vicious cycle and um, I never knew how to get out. I always wanted to get out. Um, I knew there was another way. My mom sobered up when I was 16. She drank very heavily when I was younger. When I was 16, she put herself through rehab and changed the lives of others ever since. And, um, so I kind of maybe had a head start because she was always on me. She always had my back. Um, you know, the day before she died, I was up in Illinois and I was on parole and I had to leave. I had, I, they gave me four days and they, they called and said, Eric, you can have four more to stay with your mom. And I was so grateful about that, but I had to leave. And um, she called me in right before I said goodbye. And she said, Eric, um, you know why I always had your back? And she, she could she was lung cancer, so she couldn't talk um, very well. She couldn't breathe. And um, I said, why, Mom? And she said, because you have a good heart. And those were her, her right. last words to me. Though That was it. So right. that, that sticks with me um, every day. So I hear her voice more now than I ever did when she was alive because she was just the nagging mom. Right. Um, but it's all sticking now, and she, she did her job as a mom. And she coached me to where I am now because um, of my outlook on life now. But um, OK, so prison, you know, I, I'm not going to get really uh, real deep into what I was doing. But, you know, I was doing stuff to, uh, you know, petty stuff. That's why I've been 10 times in that one long time, because it was always a lot of petty things. You're smart Whatever. enough not to do the big things, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I knew if I was going to and I always knew I'm going to get caught eventually because I was doing a lot of stuff. Um, you know, taking things that didn't belong to me to, to, to sell and, and make money for more drugs or to pay my bills because I spent my my paycheck on drugs. Um, you know, it's a, again, a vicious circle you get into as an addict. Um, um, I've done some really good things. I was part of a crew. We got out of prison. We taught ourselves business finance when I was in. We actually uh, took a, a company public and traded on the OTC markets for eight days. Um, I understand the accounting cycle. I mean, we taught ourselves all on our own. It wasn't sanctioned through the, uh, uh, through the prison or anything. They actually kind of frowned upon it for a while. And then they saw that we were so dedicated, they just let it go. Um, and, um, you know, that's helped me. That's helped me just, just in, the, in the confidence area that I did something finally for, for myself. And that's about when I started to take a different look on life. I did go to prison um, two more times since then. However, in the 10th time to prison, 
um, is when I decided to take control of my life and not let earth drag me around on its, on its access. Well, it spins on its access, you know, dragging me through the mud everywhere I go. Um, I had to stand up and take control for to control of my life. And I did that because um, I went into my, my tablet. We had tablets in there now. And I found a podcast called Achieve Your Goals with Hal Elrod. I listened to one podcast and I, it just resonated with me so hard. Um, I listened to over 100 more my last 65 days and just wanted to fill my brain with that message of positivity and change the way I thought, you know. So wait a minute, didn't you say something like you told your friends you were going to be on that podcast and they were like, yeah, yeah, he's a big guy. He's a big guy. You'll never be there. You'll never be there. Tell yeah. us that story real quick. All right. So about after about my third day, I was telling some of the guys in there, hey, you should check out this podcast, man. If you want to do something different with your life, go check it out. And um, we talked a little bit about it. And I said, I'm going to be on that podcast someday. And they were like, man, dude, you're tripping. They're like, there's no way. That's way over your head. There's no way you're going to be on that podcast. And I said, you don't know me very well. Well, it took me four months. And hell, because of the dedication, I didn't know how I was going to do it. I just knew I was going to do it. I saw it. And um, all right, so I got out of prison after listening to all the podcasts. And I joined his community. And um, um, I, you know, I was posting little quotes and stuff like that. And you know, maybe 10 or 15 people would react to it. And I just didn't feel like I was taking enough action. Um, I felt like I was slipping back, you know, and I didn't want to see number 11 as far as prison, that's for sure. So I posted something to hold myself accountable. I don't know, maybe 150 words, maybe, maybe not that many, but I said I was going to uh, um, um, take action and I was going to ride my bike five miles to this little mountain I know, and I was going to climb up the mountain and take a picture from the top of Phoenix. And I woke up the next morning and I had a flat tire. And I was like, oh, my God, what do I do? So from my prison money, they give you a debit card. I had $10 left on that debit card. And I took an Uber and I climbed that mountain and I took that picture. And that was the beginning of what really has changed my life, because um, I think that one got like 750 reactions. Um, they shut the comments down. I mean, it was just huge. So my day nine, I posted my why. And I took a picture of a mugshot where, I mean, I was just sucked up. It was bad. Right. And um, um, I got caught with like a pea size amount of weed. And I did a year in prison for that because of my background. Um, in Arizona, it was still a felony back then. So more consequences for my previous actions. And I accepted it. I didn't fight it. I didn't complain about it. Um, thought it was a little harsh. <laughs> um, but it is what it is. It, it was harsh because of my past and they, they, right. they do that. So anyways, um, I've been post, I posted in that group for 116 days straight. Now I post on my wall. I'm on today will be day 132 where I post anywhere between three and 500 words about my journey and how I've changed my life and tweaking my days and how I overcome my challenges. And when I'm feeling down, I post that. I don't just post all good stuff. I keep it real. And, um, you know, there, there was just that day where I decided I didn't like the music I was listening to anymore. So I had to change the radio station, man. Right. Right. Um, what episode number were you on with Hal? Um, well, I'm not in Hal's group anymore. No, no. But you you were on his you went on his yeah. podcast. You said you were oh, going to do oh, it. And three, you did it. What episode three, number? 392. Hell there you go. That's, that, that's it. We can we can skip the whole not on his yeah, podcast anymore because yeah. I want to make sure we touch on where you're going. And what okay. is it that you're going to work towards right now? We got about five more minutes left, and I didn't want to have you get cut short. So, okay. uh, so give us a little bit of that. But episode 392. So after you said you were going to do it four months later, you were on his podcast. I was on his podcast. What's next? But what? But what's what's next for the for well, the talking? You said there was one more thing you're going to do, and you made the you made the statement you were going to do it. What is that? I'm going to do a TED talk someday. There you go. All right. I wanted to make that's, sure you said that. That's to my the next vision. Huddle. Yes. Hold you accountable, brother, because I know you'll do it. <laughs> I, so, I okay. do it all the time. I've actually taken TED Talk pictures of people up on stage, and I, I uh, superimpose my face on it, and then I post it on my on my wall. There you go. That's <laughs> what I'm talking about. You're going to make that thing happen. Good job. Good job. <laughs> kind of okay. funny looking, but I love it. All right, so what I want to do next to get myself to that level is I want to start speaking in schools. 
All right. I live in a really rough neighborhood in Phoenix, and it's the neighborhood that I was getting high in before I went to prison these last few times. Um, and, and, you know, when you, you, you walk around or you go just go to the bus stop and you'll see someone hunched over like a puppet with his strings cut because he's so high on drugs, he can't sit up. Um, I see it every day. Um, you know, people walking around like zombies. It's really sad. Um, and I want to catch the kids before they get to this point, before they start. So I want to start speaking in schools. As long as they allow me, that's what I'm going to do and um, try to catch them before and use my story. Again, use my mess to be a message. Um, you know, if I can change even one kid's life, I'm hoping to change hundreds of them, but um, to where they, when they get to that choice where someone hands them the pipe or someone hands them the pill on a train and says, here, try this, it's fantastic. They don't have to say that because they know that they're strong enough not to and they know they're good enough and they know what's gonna happen if they do. That's what I want to do. And I'm, I'm actually, I just decided this the other day because there were several things I wanted to maybe different paths I want to go about, down. And I think that's the one that's going to show the most impact in this world. And that's absolutely, that's where absolutely. I want to go. We just had that conversation last night, in my men's group about how when somebody's been through something and they have that testimony that it has so much more impact on the person that's possibly going to get into that because they're, they're speaking from experience. This isn't just mm -hmm. book knowledge. This is, I've been there. Here's what's, you know, what's ahead for you if you keep it up, right? So uh, it's awesome that we're having yes. this conversation this morning because we just discussed it yesterday. So, um, yeah, so uh, the next step. I think you locked up. Oh, the next step for me. Oh. Yeah, next step, ne sir. Go ahead. Next Go step there. for me is I start reaching out, for, reaching out to schools. I want to, um, um, you know, um, I, I, I'm building a website. I have somebody building a website for me, and people have just jumped in to help me because they see my dedication, they see my commitment. You did, Robin, you sent me a laptop through your, through your nonprofit and I'm on it right now. <laughs> I awesome. mean, this is, it's, it's helping me out so much um, um, in so many different ways. I'm writing a book, I'm 22,000 words. I've kind of taken a, a little break from it here lately, but I need to get, get, get in and get that done. There's a reason that I've stopped because that might actually be my second book and my, my first hundred posts might be my first and how I made my transformation. Um, so we're kind of in the middle of that. Someone's paying for my self-publishing school. Um, um, someone's building my website for me. Um, I don't have a lot of time, so I'm not going to get into everybody's names, but I really appreciate everyone who's jumped in to help. Um, Cindy Lee, she's, she's built she's my awesome. digital, she's built my digital business card, my YouTube channel, my, uh, my business page. I'm starting a group. I have a group already. I want to change the name before I put it back out there, uh, to fit more of what I'm doing. Um, I think I'm going to name it. Your, your mess can be your message. That's going to be the name. Boom. Of the group. There it so, is. I love it. There it is. Um, All right. All right. So, so and this, tell me real okay. quick though, before I don't want to cut you off, but I do want to no, make it's sure okay. we, it's okay. we, we honor your time, but tell us real quick. What is one of the things I think you started a business to help people in, in a physical way. So what, tell us about that real quick. Okay. Um, all right. So my mom was passionate about gut health and somebody approached me uh, because I was having trouble with my health and my, and my job. I, I wasn't able to keep a job. I had to, I was taken by ambulance for my job because of some of my health issues. And um, so she approached me and asked me if I wanted the business opportunity to sell gut health products. And I mean, it just jumped out at me. Um, so I sell gut health products. I mean, the, the, your gut um, is the underlying cause to, to most of your health issues. And more and more doctors are getting on board with this because um, you know, we're just treating symptoms in this country. And if you can get to the underlying cause, um, your symptoms can go away. They might not yeah. go away all the way. Usually they do. But if they don't, you're going to find relief. Um, I was just in the hospital again yesterday. Um, and they did blood work and they did the same blood work seven weeks ago. I have a very advanced case of hep C. And I've been on my product for about that long. And my levels have dropped from extremely dangerous to almost normal again. And it has to be because of that. So we'll just, well, leave I mean, we can that. have that discussion. We'll have you back on a Tuesday, maybe to okay. talk with Vince because he does the wellness and we can talk about gut health. Cause that's a, there's a big part of that in keeping your whole body and overall health. Yes. Yes. It's, and it's, we have, we have some formulas that make us unique to anybody else. Nobody else can have these formulas uh, with the nucleotides and stuff. And, and just nobody else can, they've tried to mimic it. They can't do it. Um, We've got it. It's working. 
Um, I've got a group I can send anyone to if they want to go check out some more and a video they can watch to understand it better. Simple as Very that. Very cool. Very cool. All right. So um, excellent. Your mess is becoming your message. You're going to get to those kids before they actually get to the problem. And uh, but, but you're the gut guy. Is that is that what your name is? The gut guy? The gut, the gut guru the guy. Guru. There it is. Sorry. And the gut guru. All right. You, All right. A little quick story about my logo. I was joking around. I had someone who was going to make me a logo and she's real busy with her job. So of course I don't put pressure on anybody, but I, I drew this stick person and um, I sent it over and said, Oh, I had someone else make my logo for me. And she started laughing and she said, that's your logo, man. It's, it's real. It's raw. And so I just, I stuck with it. That's my logo. It's a little stick guy. There it is. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. anyways, that's it right Perfect. there. <laughs> I drew that as a joke and it, now it's my logo so that's awesome pretty cool that's awesome this I, do have a, I, have a, I have a great sense of humor too so um it's you know i'm always thing. always making fun of stuff in my life and and you know keeping it light keep keep you know when i have problems i go i go, I'll go through the problem and then i i'm learning to just you know I, I was dragging so much stuff behind me through my whole life i how can you climb a mountain with an anvil strapped to your leg you can't you got to let it go right so you can climb right. so Beautiful. Anyways. I was thinking about your logo. There's a, I don't know if they're out there, but there's a company called Two Men in a Truck. Oh, yeah. The little stick yeah. figure, right? So when I saw yours, I'm like, let's see yours on the side of trucks all over the country at some point. And that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. Be. I'll speak that into existence if I can. So, all right, man. Well, it's looking like we're about to coming up on our time. So we open it up for questions and comments. And uh, anybody want to fill in, ask a question and uh, tell, Eric, uh, tell Eric about himself. So uh, that, that would be out. Eric, good Facebook. morning. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. You know, on the Daily Huddle, you heard uh, Robin ask the question, how are you? And he says, I am the way I say I am is the answer. And as you were telling your story, I got that through everything. You kept standing up saying, I am this way. And when you were in the ditch, you were saying, I am in the ditch. And then when, you're, when you didn't want to be in the ditch anymore, you said, hey, man, I don't like the music. I'm going to change the radio station. You said, I am this new way. So uh, I want to honor you for the courage it takes to tell your story. Uh, Thank you. And, uh, you know, I, I don't sense a shred of guilt or shame where you are, brother. And I applaud that. And, uh, and so thank you for creating the space for me and others to be able to be with our messes and thank you. contemplate having my mess be my message. Because uh, we all have it, brother. So thank you, you know, so much for the contribution I, that you are. I'm going to add to that real quick. Um, something that something my mom said to me is actually how I started to learn to love myself. And, and be okay with what got me to this point, because it got me to this point. And I'm in a really good place, like I, like I said before. Um, but what got me to start loving myself was I just thought one day I was like, man, your heart is in a really good place. And you do have a good heart. And that's what I look at when I decide if I'm going to love myself or not, not what other people think of me, not what other people say about me, not how I look, not, you know, I'm doing the right things. And because I'm doing the right things, I'm able to love myself. So um, if, you, if you can't love yourself, you're not going anywhere. You have to learn to do that. So Yeah, but you can't base that on what other people think, right? And that's where you, you, chose, you chose to make that decision and that determination, right? Yes, yes. Hey, yes. Eric. Yes. Um, I'm so proud of you for talking to high schoolers because I'm a motivational speaker about distracted driving and I love talking to high schoolers as well. They're so impressionable and they suck all the information in. I, I, I totally, I, I believe that too. I believe that, um, you know, maybe not all of them will, but it plants a seed and it might hit them back 10 years from now when they're in their dark place um, and it might stop them from going to that dark place. So either way, it's going to benefit. Yeah. yeah, you got to hit them when they're young with your message so they don't make the same mistakes when they're older. Yep. Yes. 
Beautiful. Thank Great you. comment, Molly. Thank you. Stan, Thank you, you want to throw something in there, buddy? Yes, yes. I just like to say, first of all, man, your, your, your story is just beautiful, man. Um, it just, it just is so inspiring. And I can't, I can't conceive of anybody that can hear that and not be inspired and be encouraged with their life and that they're in a dark place to come out of a dark place and go into a lighter place and to know that even if they slip into a darker place again, they can come out again into the light. And I just really, really thank you for that, man. And um, I know there's just great things ahead, of, ahead for you, man. I really appreciate your story and, and sharing that. Thank you. Thank, thank you. I appreciate that. I know there's going to be good things for me too. And I know I'm going to be able to spread this message and make good things for other people. And that's the Absolutely. best feeling in the world. It really is. You already are. You already you are. Already are. Yep. Thank doing you. It, doing it as we speak. Stan, uh, Lee, go ahead, sir. Eric, amazing. Thank you. Thank you. I'll tell you, I'm, uh, I'm a social worker by background. And I'll just say there's two things that I would just kind of suggest you think about inserting. If, especially you can talk about young men. Weakness, because men are afraid of weakness and you have to show them that the fear of being weak is part of the uh, part of the, the the problem uh and i think you need to talk about in, a vulnerability you have shown that you're strong through vulnerability and especially young men so you don't use these words but my suggestion is that if you can kind of insert that kind of stuff you'll get to people in a different way, especially possibly their parents and mentors to help them, the parents and mentors, help the kids. Right, right. Good, good word, Lee. Yeah, and that's- I like that's, that. Because your power, Eric, comes from what you're saying right now, comes from that vulnerability, comes from that transparency, comes from sharing that. That's what gives it the strength and the power that you have. So to, to open that up to what Lee said, that, that makes total sense to kind of throw that in there to let these kids know ahead of time, you know, you could get biblical with it. And in my weakness, he is made strong and all that good stuff. But, but certainly that that's a big piece of that strength is what you hide has control over you. What you go ahead and just admit to, it loses its control over you. Right. So I'm weak. I have a problem and I need to, to help to fix it. Now it has no control over you anymore. Stan, did you have one more thing you wanted to say, sir? No. Okay. All right. Just didn't. I, I thought I saw your hand. The little peace sign there, because you're like you're like the guy at the auction stand. You just barely make a little, make a little thing. Like yeah, that's okay. true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> All right. So Eric, I think that's about our time. We're coming up on nine thirty. I want to go ahead and see if you have any last words you want to share. Um, uh, your contact information. I'm one of the guys, Geo Sorrell. Can you grab that off of Facebook and drop it in the chat, or everybody can go to the Facebook page and grab it because I believe your contact information is there. If it's not. Go back and put it there when we get done, all right? So we can all get a hold of you. Um, but give us some last words before we split, Eric. Really, I just, what I really want to spend this time on is thanking everybody who's jumped in to help me because, um, uh, you know, the people who comment on my posts and the world-class advice that I've gotten. And I, you know, I use that advice when I can use it and the stuff I can't use, I still hold value in and maybe I'll use it someday. Um, you know, you don't have time to use everything. A lot of it I can, a lot of it I can't, but I, I shelf that other stuff because I might need it someday. There you go. And um, I, I hold everything that everybody says with value. I don't discard anything. And, um, you know, it, it, I've, I've actually done that. I've, I've came back and, and used some stuff that I wasn't using at the time, but I use now. So I want to thank everybody who's jumped in to help me um, and, and put themselves second to me to make sure that I'm successful. And, you um, um, you know, I'm just so grateful. Living in gratitude, man. I try to live in the moment. If you live in the moment, it's always okay. That's right. You know? That's right. It's always well, that's okay. Awesome. And, and using those negative things, even the negative things sometimes, you know, you, you shelve them and then you can come back around to it. Um, you know, I was one of these songs I listened to where the guy says, you know, a guy came talking tough to me. I wanted to duck and swing, but I walked away. That was the tougher thing, right? So, you know, you've told me some stories about, uh, you know, the anger and the frustration you felt and just had to look at the person and say, hey, you know what, I'm sorry you feel that way, but, you know, this isn't going to happen. I got uh, the moving story is what I was talking about, but we don't have time to get into that today. So we're going to go ahead and wrap up. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Sorrell and Gio thank for you. this opportunity, for having this platform. Everybody that came today, Andrea, thank you so much for showing up and Molly. Uh, Joyciana, we always end out with seven things. And Eric, I need you to hang on just a minute before you cut off after sure. everybody else does. All right. Okay. 
we always end up with the seven things that you can do to live like a renegade, have great skin, look great, and have a sexy body for the rest of your long, long life. And those seven things are love always, always love, 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 love till you got no love left. Laugh out loud, stress less, because Gio likes to say there's only one life, man. Don't stress about it. Come on, have a good time one time around. Eat more plant-based. My buddy Vince has turned me around, changed my life. Love the trees, hug the trees, eat the trees because they're there for us to eat. 40,000 or 400,000 plants you can eat in this world. Uh, get seven or more hours of sleep every night so you can look beautiful and not have bags under your eyes. Give, 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 give until there's nothing left. There's never been a, a, a U-Haul truck or a Wells Fargo truck behind a hearse. They just, you can't take it with you. And finally, move like your life depends on it because you know what? It does. All right, everybody, that's our show. My name's Robin Stern. My guest today is Eric Hansen. We love you guys. We hope you go out there and change the world and have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Peace. Thank you. Peace on. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. Thanks for that, man. I thank you. Thanks Good for stuff, that. Man. Good stuff. Good All right, everybody. So we're not live anymore. Uh, we still yes, are. We are. Oh, we are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right.